I created this Joe Bro design from scratch, and now I'm gonna walk you through layer by layer on how you can recreate this exact look. At the end of the video, I'm even gonna give you the free design file so you can go in and play around with the layers and even create a new graphic to share on social media. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and drop a like on this video and let's jump in. What I'm gonna do today is walk you through layer by layer and explain my process when putting together this final graphic. My hope is by the end of this video that you'll be able to recreate this graphic yourself, but not only that, that you'll actually understand the process and why I did what I did. And of course, I'll include the PSD down in the description, so if you'd love to go through and click on the layers yourself, you are more than welcome to do that. Now, if you appreciate having the PSD down in the description, make sure you drop a like on the video. It seriously helps the channel so much. I'm gonna start off by going to the bare bones of this design. I turned off all of the filters that I've applied here, and you can see I have this solid gray background and this Joe Burrow cutout. Now, for those of you that want to know, my design is set to 1080 by 1350 with a resolution of 300. As a general rule of thumb, that's what I usually put together because that is the maximum dimensions that you can put together for an Instagram file. And then resolution, I love keeping it nice and high at 300. So now that I'm in Photoshop, you can see here my Joe Burrow design. This is an image I found off of Google and cut out. So if you're not familiar, you could have your image right here and then go up to this select tool and then hit select subject. And it usually does a great job of selecting the subject. So from here, I wanted to add some lighting to this cutout to really make it stand out more against the solid gray background. And so what I did is added some shadows and then I added some highlights. Now there are tons of different ways that you can add in shadows and highlights. I actually have a great video talking through how to make images pop and I'll link that up in the card above. But for this process, I actually kept things pretty simple and what I did is used a round brush. So I had a brush that I set to about like 43 or something like that. I turned my flow all the way down and then I had black and I painted over my cutout using a clipping mask, all of the areas that I was wanting to add shadows. And then for the whites, I did the exact opposite. So same exact thing, but used a white brush instead of a black brush. Now I know that's not the best way of doing shadows, but overall it worked for this design. So now that I have my shadows and highlights added in, I'll always go through and add some coloring to the eyes, make them pop a little bit more. I find that it's kind of a common trend in modern graphic design, specifically sports graphic design, to really make the eyes stand out. And so I went through and added in some exposure adjustment and some black and white to make those a little bit wider. So essentially what I did is took a brush, made my brush size pretty small, probably about three pixels, two pixels, and painted in all of the areas. i got to turn my flow up. Painted in all the areas where his eyes are, something like that, and then something like this. And then what you can do is if you hit command on this thumbnail over here, and then if you hit exposure over here, and then turn off that layer that you created. It, it creates a mask based off of that area, and then you can adjust the exposure specifically for that point very easily. And so if we zoom all the way out here, you can see now his eyes are super bright, probably a little bit too bright, but we will stick with what we already have. So that's how I went about doing the eyes. So then from there, I wanted to make sure that the eyes, sometimes when you turn the exposure up on the eyes, it can make the entire eye look very red. And so I added a black and white mask over. And so you can see in here, it kind of looks more of like a yellowish orange. So I added a black and white filter and it made it so much better. So that's the cutout. And overall, I think that looks pretty good. I could do a lot more here. I went through and added a couple of different filters to the cutout itself to make it stand out a little bit more. I added a camera raw filter and you can see not a huge difference here. I'll double click so you guys can see what I did. So here all I really did was bump the clarity up to 10 and the texture up to 13 to add a little bit more detail into my image. I'm going to group everything for simplicity's sake and name it cutout. And now let's move on to the background. The background is actually super simple. I started off with this brush texture. And essentially all I did is created a new layer and hit B on my keyboard to bring up brushes. I have some awesome brushes that I love using. So here's this watercolor essential brush and you can see it kind of creates this cool kind of brush watercolor effect. What I love doing is turning the flow down a little bit, turning up the brush size a good amount and you can get a really cool look in the way that the brush overlaps with itself. So what I did is kind of played around and created something that I thought looked good. And then I took that and scaled it down. 
So command T and then scale that down to about here. And so you'll see that's basically gets us to here. One of the things I did is added a layer mask using that same brush and basically removed that bottom part of the image to allow for some more contrast where Joe Burrow's feet are. Now from here, I added a couple of effects. I added a city skyline. I think I went on Google and Googled Cincinnati, Ohio or something like that and found this image. And I added this as a clipping mask to that brush. From here, I added a black and white adjustment layer and then added a curves adjustment to brighten it up a little bit more. Now I added in the stripes. I think I went on Google and Googled tiger stripes and I found a really cool tiger stripe. This is what the actual tiger stripe looked like. And then I added a color overlay to make it white. And then from here, I wanted to add some more grunge to my image. And so I added a rectangle over my existing rectangle. So you can see here, it really is coming in at these points. And what I did is drag that in and then I added some inner shadow. So I added some inner shadow, turned the size all the way up, turned the noise up a good amount, and then turned my fill down to zero. So you can see this is what the actual rectangle looks like. And this is what it looks like when you turn the fill down to zero. When you turn the fill down, essentially the rectangle itself disappears, but whatever filters that are applied to it remain. And so that was super helpful there. I then added this orange circle and then when you combine that with the Joe Burrow cutout at the front, I think it adds a really nice pop to the image. So that was the base of this design. And then from here, I wanted to make it stand out a little bit more. So then what I did is I took that same watercolor brush and added some details all the way around the image. Really to make it feel like the cutout itself is interacting with the watercolor elements from the background. And so those were all of my layers. And then from here, I moved into the final tweaks to the design. And so what I did is I duplicated this, I hit convert to smart object. And then what I always do is hit command A and command J. And what that allows me to do is to restrict the design itself to this rectangle. You can see here, if not, we have all these other parts that I don't necessarily want to apply effects to. So here we have this design. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And so what I did is went through and added a camera raw filter. And I love doing this at the very end of the design process to all of the layers combined. Because what that allows you to do is add some really good texture, really good clarity, and then also add, most importantly, noise and sharpening at the highest level. So I find that when you add some noise or some grain at the very top when you're finished with your design, it adds it to the entire design, not a specific element, and makes it feel more cohesive. Really blends it nicely. Now I'm gonna go back to detail, add some sharpening, and then zoom back out. And so you can see we went from that to that. And I think it helped a lot to really make our image stand out. Now what you'll notice is in these final layers, there's actually a white border around here. And I'll actually talk through exactly what I did. So I was going back and forth on how I wanted to do this design. And I actually created a white version instead of a gray version. So you can see here, I created this white version and I was like, oh, that looks pretty good. But I think I ended up going with the gray version. But then I was like, what if I were to overlap the two? And so that's exactly what I did. So I took this gray version and overlapped it on the white version. So I took it and scaled it down a little bit so I could preserve some of that same texture coming through my design. So you can see here, we still have the nice noisy texture in the background with the watercolor effect. And that's coming from this white version. And then what I did as a finishing touch is I added these dashes that make the background, the white background and the gray background kind of feel cohesive. And so essentially what I did is hit T on my keyboard and then added a couple of slashes and then positioned them accordingly. So that's it guys. That's how I created this Joe Burrow design from scratch. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. As a reminder, I'll put a link down in the description to download the Photoshop file so you can go in and play around with all of the layers for yourself. If you create a cool design and you want to share it on social media using that file, feel free. All I ask is that you would tag Sports Design School on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you decide to share it. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.